Okay, so we've got Fu Lam, the uh, new Keen as into the game. Into his last 16 here, playing Steve Gray. Just tuned in, he's 2-0 down. He's took the yellows here. They, uh, they don't look ideal at the moment. this back later food just uh, a bit of advice I, I can see you're potting yourself into trouble here but be careful Stevie Gray who's coming to the table now as a master of controlling situations he'll just drop this over the hole and all of a sudden you are in huge trouble Shot. Got them both out in one. It's a good shot. Steve will just drop this in and leave you pretty much no shot. And that's it. Force you to move that one that's stopping him from going game. see so your brain ticking over. I don't want to move that one, but I think I have to. Too risky to go from out of off across the table, but... That's a nice shot. I'm happy with that. Just keep the white. Steve can't go from there. So you've got yourself another shot. But the master just clips in again. And you are still in huge trouble. So, it's a good shot. One visit. <coughs> Steve's got the red near the yellow in the middle. Doesn't go into the top corner, doesn't go into the middle. I don't think. That's his problem. This one down the cushion onto the other one. Might even try and kiss the black here if he's not going. No. Yeah, he's played another containing shot there. Tucked your heart up against the yellow.
And in this situation, I think you'll most probably find Steve dropping in another snooker behind one of these reds. Maybe not off the first shot, possibly. If, unless he's confident of being able to go and get all these balls, he'll uh, he'll play the snooker. waiting for the right moment when he's like a, like a leopard in a tree and it's not oh is there a gap if there's no gap it's not a bad shot looks like there might be a gap though Stiff. just needed to play that a fraction softer well Was uh, got lucky killing the yellow there. Oh, he, what's he done? He's called a foul on himself there. Must have touched a ball. Well, now you have a chance for it. This is where you got that last yellow on the black. Work out what you're going to do. How you're going to get there. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the other table, Mark Robinson's free nil up on Dale Watson. It's not bad. A bit unlucky where the yellows landed, but Okay, I'm back. Stevie Gray, run this down. Push the yellow safe. Nice shot.
things. See now this shot here, Fu, I don't I don't think that was the right option. Yeah, you, you're not there's no value in potting that ball. Even if you somehow land on that other yellow, you're still not getting to the black. It's basically Stevie could be in a little bit of bother here. Just got to be careful. If that uh, red doesn't go inside the black now, and the black does go, could pose some problems for Steve. He's playing the snooker. Two balls to hide behind. Nice weight. If you have a look back through these frames, what you'll see is uh, Stevie Gray is a master of leaving you no no real opportunity to go. You'll, you'll always see he tries to keep the white tied up or your balls tied up or bring his out in the open. It's basically the uh, pretty straightforward when you think about it, but you know. Maybe not so obvious in practice. Okay, two shots here. I guess we'll find out if the red goes inside the black or not. Looks like it might, by the way, he's playing these. Gray goes 3 nil up. Meanwhile, Dale Watson's pegged one back. He's 3-1 uh, down now. spread there, he's uh, possibly going to choose yellows by the looks of those balls. And in the background you can see Jake playing scary. Not sure what the score is there. Good to see a couple of the uh, northern lads in the last 16 here. It's very good. Just... Okay, can we switch? Can we switch? Switch back for the Fu Lam power break coming up. Here he goes down on a cue. Bang! There's the pack cruncher. He's potted a red and a yellow. Yellows are spread wide. It's 
So, uh, to lay down Mazir, choose the yellows here. That yellow closest to the black, the yellow ball that's closest to the black is uh, probably the hardest one to get on. So yeah, I, I wouldn't take this fool, I would have took the other yellow and got on that one near the black. But, this is not a bad option, you can still take this corner one now and be on that one into the middle, the hardest ball. This still works for me, just screw back about an inch, even stun where you are is alright. Play. You're going to run into the edge of the red here. Might even push the red towards the yellow. If you hit it a little bit thin, it's probably better so the white runs forward. That's perfect. Oh, didn't drop it. Didn't drop it. Okay. So, Steve looking at reds here. One into the middle. One back into the corner. See what he's done here? He's got an angle to play to go up into the balk area for the two balls up there so that his last couple of balls will be near the black when he finishes. No? He's actually... I'm wrong. He's got the angle to run through onto that one. That's even... You know, get rid of the one on the cushion. I thought he was actually playing to get up to the top first, but... Because then he could have had these two balls, played the one down the cushion, the one in the middle, and been on the black, but... Either way, he's... Oh... You only go up the table once. You know, try to minimise your travel of the white. Work from one end to the other, if you can. That's the theory. Okay, foo. Probably got a bit of a uh, testing pot here. If you make the pot, you go game. The one beside the red up the top there. Yep. That's it. Now you're a big chance. Not sure if this yellow will sneak in the middle past the other one. I think it will. If it does, you don't want to push the yellow along the cush though. You've got to be very careful not to clip the yellow as it goes in. Because if you clip that yellow dead... Well, he has tickled it, but luckily he didn't hit it with too much pace. Or maybe not luckily, well managed, I should say. Yeah, you clip that just even a touch thicker or a tiny bit harder. That yellow all of a sudden becomes very tricky. Either on the rail or just off. It's and, uh, yeah, danger. It's a nice angle. I think you can screw down, sort of screw down the cush a bit to get on the black into the middle. Yeah. Yeah, just... You play it so you come off the cush a little bit too. You don't want to be flat on the cush. Playing the black into the middle. You want to be, you know, six inches off. That's it. He's overhit that. He's on it long as well now. Got a choice. Long or in the middle, whichever you like. Middle, you've got to be careful you don't pop your red in the other centre. He's taking it long. Oh, he's just jawed it. That could be just a touch of uh, scoreboard there. 3-0 down and maybe just had a bit of a swing at it rather than actually cued it in. This is the other thing that makes Steve very good, very hard to beat. You know, a lot of people, they might 3-0, balls are on, they might think it's all over already. But Steve's just double checking everything, making sure takes his time. He, uh, when he gets his chances, he does punish. He doesn't. Uh, not very often you get a re-gift from Steve Gray. And that's uh, you know, 
and that's what this game's about. You gotta take your chances when they're there. Oh, he's just, as I speak, he's just overheat that. He probably played that a little quick, that shot. He's all right. He's clipped it over. Left the white. He, he didn't play to pot. Didn't play to pot that there. I don't think he was just playing to cover and run. Yeah, about the only shot here is two cushions into the corner, or could play two cushions into the middle, but that's a bit trickier. Can play a snooker too, but it's probably an easier up and down for Steve. So it's. Uh, Luka's not the worst shot in the world, if you get it right. you just got to choose what you think's the percentage option there, whether... <laughs> you know. Might see him flick this in with a touch of uh, left-hand side, I think. He might just clip it in and come up the table too, playing ball. He screwed off it. See, I don't think that was the right shot either there, but that's just me. I wouldn't have screwed off it. You can go half ball, you can flick it in, but... And 4-0 to Steve Gray. Might flick over to the Robbo, Dale Watson. As Dale uh, knocks in a black, it's 3-2 now. Even in these uh, best of sevens, you know, like, from 3-0 up, you can be all of a sudden 3 all without doing too much wrong. Looks like it's Mark's break, but, you know, for example, if it was Dale's break, and he goes out 3 all, and Mark might have only made one mistake. Yeah, look at this. Uh, it's a cutthroat game, this pool. When you get two top-class players playing together, especially at the top end, because... You know, they can all pop balls, they can all play position. You don't get many chances. So, uh, Mark's got a couple of options here. I um, can see the reds if he plays this red off the yellow inside. Inside these yellows. Reds are even an option here, even though they don't look it. He's just having a look. He's I'm sure a player of Mark will uh, see all the options, the reds and the yellows. Yellows are probably the balls, but... Now, with the yellows, he's probably going to look at that yellow. With these two yellows up near the red here, he's going to try and get an angle to clip the yellow in along the cushion with a touch of left hand side to clip the red out of the way of that yellow. Actually might be because that as it is that yellow that's in behind the red is not that easy to get to and get back out of. Wonder he might be a bit straight on this yellow too to get down here. This requires good queuing. He's played that with uh, running side, right hand side. See now this is the shot I was talking about. You clip this in and you nudge into the red to clear it away from the uh, yellow. He's got to play this with running side too. Just a little bit of, mainly top, but a tiny little bit of left. Probably more just top, I think. It's hard to see the angle, but. Just so the white runs off into the red. You want to push the red to the rail you, so you've got a clear shot on the yellow. You don't need to overplay it, just clear the red out of the way. Oh, he's played off the cushion, that's, that's a nice shot. He actually played off the cushion to run into the red, so he didn't have to use any side. Kept it nice and simple. looking here at uh, what's his best option. Does he just drop this in and take the yellow long? Or does he take the yellow long now? Does he clip it in thin and play for the yellow in the middle? 
few different options here. Looks like he's clipping it in. Might be running into the red just. No, he's tried to clip it in thin and be on the middle, which he's succeeded. So now, just some good queuing. Drop this in the middle. Don't have to do anything with the white. You got a shot on the black. Probably run through, maybe a tiny bit, just natural roll through. That's it. Give yourself maximum chance of potting the ball. Just play it plain ball. And Mark Robinson advances to the last eight. So, the two blokes wearing their Australian shirts have actually advanced to the last 16. See Gray making the Australian Masters team this year, Robbo making the Australian Open team.